Gun Control in Cybernetics, Part 3, Where the Problem Really Lies. In the United States, there are about 11,000 homicide deaths from guns a year. In other countries, the number is just a few dozen. This in spite of the fact that the number of inmates in the United States reaches more than 2 million. What can our cybernetic model tell us about this? The answer lies in the first homeostat. It has nothing to do with honest and responsible citizens owning guns. It has to do with the existence of legislation that curtails police work and creates a fed-forward feedback loop that rewards criminal activity in the sense that it goes unpunished. Explosive criminal behavior is the result of legislation and the court decisions that tie the hands of the police. This time, let us isolate the first homeostat, the one connecting police to the other two-thirds of the government, courts and legislators. I hope this exercise shows the counterintuitive nature of legal systems, whereby the well-intended purpose of protecting the civil rights of citizens can lead to protecting criminals. What can we say about the amplifiers in this graph? On the amplifying side, the police get a big budget, patrol cars, guns, radios, computers, and access to huge databases, and all sorts of protective gear, plus even eavesdropping equipment. You can add early retirement, health benefits, and any other thing that helps the police do a better job. All this is fine. However, on the attenuator or filtering side, the laws and court decisions do almost everything in their power to tie the hands of the police. Miranda rights, search and seizure rules, extremely high burden of proof, and plea bargaining are things that act as filters against effective police work. Let's say that this homeostat settles at 10,000 convictions a year. Just an example. What we want to test it is what happens if all those filters were mentioned, we mentioned were removed. Initially, the number of convictions would jump to perhaps five times as high. Then again, a learning system would develop among criminals, and fewer of them would attempt to commit crimes because of the certainty of being captured and sentenced expeditiously, and would it go back to close to 100%. The new balance would lower to less than 5,000 convictions or less. In Mexico, the figure of convictions against crimes committed is currently at about 1%. What would also happen, and not shown here, is that the rules that make up all the filtering activity are a high-gain amplifier for attorney's income. I hate to say this, but the late Professor Robert Benson has researched this situation thoroughly and the results are staggering. To say it succinctly, the evolution of law schools adopting case law studies and the rules of precedent assures a law practice with increased complexity, prestige, and business. Therefore, the current legal profession is structured from law school onwards not in the service of justice, but in the production of income, income for lawyers. Income and not justice is the key variable explaining the performance of the first criminal justice loop shown just a few moments ago. Legislators and non-governmental organizations such as the ACLU acting in the defense of so-called civil liberties work to maximize their public 
appeal directed at the numerous people of scarce resources. That's where the votes are. So we can safely conclude that populist policymaking and the income of attorneys and judges are some key factors that have not allowed the modern technologies for detecting and curbing crime to be successful. The more technology, the more restrictions of searches, arrests, etc. In the end, the people that are less well off economically will fall victim to the overzealous legislators, judges, and attorneys who justify themselves as pursuers of justice. I have no idea how many more Clint Eastwood 44 Magnum movies have to be made for people to understand that given the high variety nat nature of police work, at the first sign of a policeman becoming untrustworthy, he or she should be fired. But never should the work of honest policemen be nullified through legislation or court decisions. Again, it could be shown that the variety equation is being mismanaged by doing so. Legislators and judges appear to be just as ignorant as the person who is playing the three-door game and chooses to keep his original choice after a goat is revealed in some other door. He, nor they, are clearly not taking advantage of the free information that the game has given them to improve their chances. The same parallelism applies to the American justice system. The police have much more knowledge about who is doing what, when and where, and why than they are allowed to apply to stop crime. If they were allowed to proceed more freely, then criminality would probably go to zero in a short time. Instead, we keep playing this game where we all pretend we do not know what we know, we know for certain. All in the name of some badly designed homestead called the adversarial system of justice. This so-called justice system produces everything except justice because the assumption it is based on is completely ignoring the actual cybernetics of such system. As I said a few moments ago, the adversarial system maximizes attorney's income, not justice for the victims or fair fairness for the accused. The backlog of cases in the court system is a telltale sign that the current system does not work. To honor and serve justice, we must remember that cybernetics tells us that a complex system's purpose is what the system does, not the expressed or hidden purposes of the participants or players. What is the purpose of the current American legal system? What it does. It puts people in jail, but not as fast as it should, and not consistently enough as to dissuade future crime. It has become ultra-stable at two or three million people in jail, and will stay that way until the whole system is redesigned to use cybernetic modeling. The other thing this system does, it convinces people that change is impossible. You will hear this argument from people that work for the obsolete system and don't even know it. So, here you have it. This is how gun control really works. On which side of the variety equation are you personally? Thank you for watching. This is the end.